A colonnade is part of the memorial to the victims of fascism in Berlin. Now, I start, as I always do, by choosing an element of the, the drawing of the building which I can draw accurately and use then as a reference point, a measuring point for the rest of the, the drawing. And this is quite a simple choice, this front closest column. Now, the, the, the main thing to do at this point is to work along the columns and to get two things correct. One is the foreshortening, the, the compression of, of space, the further away something goes at an angle. And so the columns get narrower and the spaces between them become, in effect, closer. And so I'm working at that. The other really important um, decisions to make are the perspective angles above and below the columns. And it's getting both of these things correct, the angles as well as the foreshortening, which will determine if I get the, in effect, the, the effect of the width of the portico correct. And so now I'm just establishing the, the depth with this end part. Now I make two fundamental mistakes in this drawing and I'll tell you at the end, so see if you can guess them. They're, they're pretty significant ones. They're not little fiddly things. So I've, I've put that figure in, just moved it slightly to, um, um, I think, put it in a better position and I put the stairs in place. And now I'm pushing back into the detail further in the portico. It's important with these uh, um, details to keep the perspective lines going to the same vanishing point. Th this is a two point, two perspective point, um, vanishing point drawing. Most of the, the obvious perspective lines go off to the left hand side, but just as importantly, they do go off to the right hand side as well, although not for nearly as long. So just doing those supporting beams under the portico and a bit of detail on the entablature um, and get the outline of the pediment done. Note that on the corners of the pediment, the triangles don't come to a point. They actually come to a, a, a small straight line, not to a point. I, I often see people draw them to points and it's just because we, we think triangle and we haven't looked carefully enough to notice. Now there are all these all these small sculptures on this building and it's tempting to leave them off. And I think we, we make one of two mistakes. One is we, we don't draw them at all. And the other is we try to draw them in too much detail. And the trick is to uh, draw enough to suggest them, but not so much that we draw attention to what um, can end up a very overworked um, element if we're not careful. So the important thing when we draw them is to draw them as simply as we can and create the effect. Just finishing the portico, which goes back quite deep. And it's important to get that because it gives a sense of the columns coming forward from that wall. So here I am filling in these little um, winged victory statues. This is a Greek temple. So even though they look a bit like angels with their wings, they, they certainly wouldn't be angels. They're, they're, they could represent the Greek goddess of victory, Nike, uh, since this was originally built as a, as a celebration of, um, of uh, Prussian victory over Napoleon, I believe. And the same with these statues in the pediment. It's important not to overdraw them. The effect of the statues is important. It's going to look very empty if we leave them out. And yet we, we don't want to kind of be drawing little figures because we'll probably not get them right and then they'll just look like they're falling out or they're silly. So it's probably worth uh, if you can zoom in, in on my choices for the line work there. And now I'm just drawing the uh, the other um, a small part of the, the left hand side here. And then I'm going to start on the tone work. Now I'm using Copic markers, neutral grey. They, they come across as a bit lighter in this than they do in life because I I've had to tweak the light a bit just to, to make the video look a bit a bit better. So I'm, I'm using N4, which is the fifth grade of, um, of the neutral gray color because there's an N0 as well. So I establish the darkest parts with N4 and then I work back with N3, N2, N1 doing um, lighter tonal shades and it doesn't really matter so much how dark the dark is. It's, it's the relative value of tones that, that will really impact things. And I use tones, though, to 
also just bring out and highlight those pediment figures. And I think, you know, you can imagine that the, the drawing would lose a lot if we didn't have them. What were my two mistakes? Well, when I shifted that, that figure, I made a mistake of shifting it too close to the colonnade. So the effect is to make either her into a giant, um, but more likely I make the colonnade look a bit smaller than it really is. The other is if you look at the gap between the end two columns on the left, um, I've extended the portico down to there and I shouldn't have. Hi, I'm Stephen Travers. An important part of after I've done every drawing is to look at it and say, what could I do better next time? And so I've got two things from that drawing, obviously, to be more careful with the scale of my figures if I move them. And the second one is to pay attention to where the detail fits between columns so I don't get that wrong. But hey, this is how we learn and move on and progress. I hope it was fun and helpful for you to watch and I'll see you next time. Bye.